What's happening ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. It's Michael here today bringing you our latest Fallout 4 build, The Tinkerer. Remember to click the subscribe button if you're enjoying all these Fallout 4 builds and you don't want to miss all the new ones we've got coming each week. So a scavenger build has been highly demanded over the last few weeks and as a result we prioritized making this build. Remember to leave a comment with the title of the build you want to see next. After all the power to decide our next build is in your hands. The Tinkerer is for anyone looking for a unique playthrough without an intense atmosphere of urgency to finish the main storyline. Of course, if you want to rush through the main storyline, you can, but playing the Tinkerer can also be very laid back. This build is dense with roleplaying either way. This Tinkerer build is all about scrapping the wasteland and transforming the junk around her into something useful. This build will collect everything and is certainly a bit of a hoarder. Imagine a really creative, intelligent, messy kind of girl who creates herself a bizarre scrapyard to chill in. She loves colour and she's a kind-hearted person who will usually lend a hand. This build actually uses 12 intelligence to level up super fast and will explain how to attain this during the video. This character can also be played as a male but you will have to change the backstory yourself. Money isn't the main focus of the Tinkerer's life but she is well aware that money helps her buy crafting supplies and she is obsessed with crafting. She'll craft as often as she can creating everything she can and this includes working on power armor. The Tinkerer will always be designing new things, so having 5 sets of power armor all set up on various racks in her scrapyard is definitely something you can expect. Because of the wide variety of gear she will collect, we're not going to talk about power armor customization in the gear section. Simply mix different pieces together with a whole bunch of modifications creating multiple sets of power armor aesthetics to wear depending on your moods and needs. As always, we've got timestamps in the description so you can navigate throughout the video and this will let you skip sections or come back to sections to remember information. You can also find our social media links in the description alongside our Snapchat usernames, which you should definitely go check out. Our followers on Snapchat see our upcoming builds before anyone else. Now let's get into the backstory of the Tinkerer and find out where this wacky girl came from and what her life was like before October 23rd, 2077. Born in Boston, the Tinkerer grew up in a pretty standard family with parents who loved to spoil her with love, care, and plenty of gifts. Like many young children, she loved toys that involved building things, and her favorite items were buildable cars, classic building blocks, and craft kits. She would make vehicles for teddy bears using skateboard pieces, and also came up with various projectile-based gadgets that she would use to roleplay being a superhero. The Tinkerer was of course much more intelligent than others her age, and things would be like this for her entire life. She had an absolutely insane memory and could learn things incredibly fast through both theories such as through reading books and also practice such as trying to fix things or being shown physically how to do something. Going through high school, the Tinkerer wasn't overly social and she spent most of her time daydreaming in the corner of the classroom. While she was praised as a very analytical girl, she was one of those people that just seemed to be good at everything. She could paint artworks like photos and she was fairly good at sport too. That said, she wasn't too good in social situations and was viewed by others as quite weird. She went through the education system topping engineering, maths, science, legal studies and visual arts and her achievements made her parents very proud. Her father owned a car surfacing business and she helped work on cars a lot in the garage, often leaving multiple unfinished projects on the side and many inventions she had created while she had spare time. She would use parts from Mr. Handy's and different robots to design various tools or simply create decorations. As much of an outcast as the Tinkerer was in school, there was one guy who she was close with. They would often enjoy each other's company and after spending a few years in a relationship after high school, the boy decided to join the military and the Tinkerer went to college. She originally did engineering, however she found it quite boring and restrictive in regards to what she wanted to make. She bounced between many degrees until she ended up sticking with a law degree, which she found quite easy. She wanted a job that allowed her to thrive because of her superior memory, and also let her make lots of money. Becoming a lawyer, the Tinker was able to make a good income while building things in her own time. Her work paid well, which allowed her to buy materials, and because of her intelligence, she got all her work done in minimal time. The rest of her time was spent in a workshop she rented out, and it was this place that gave her more joy than any other place in the world. The only other place which compared was in the arms of her boyfriend, and after he left military service, the two decided to get married and had a child. All was well with the husband getting himself a job while the Tinkerer stayed at home with Sean and spent time with him as she built new creations. Eventually, as we know, the bombs began to fall and the Tinkerer's life was changed forever. 
Next, we talk about the faction choices and motives of the Tinkerer. However, I will let you know that I'll be revealing the factions in Fallout 4. If you don't know all the joinable factions and don't want to know, then skip this section using the timestamps in the description. We are, however, keeping the faction and big quest storylines super vague. The Tinkerer is going to exit Vault 111 defeated and miserable. She's extremely intelligent and ambitiously creative, but she also happens to be highly emotional and quite sensitive. The more time the Tinkerer spends in the Wasteland, the more she begins to change. And as one would expect, she hardens up fast after being forced to take many lives. She will dedicate much of her time to finding Sean, and along the way will aim towards developing a positive mindset. Eventually, she will embrace her lonelier Wasteland lifestyle and will make the most out of having all the time in the world by scavenging and crafting. She will devote her massive amounts of leisure time to her most favorite hobby and will continually learn new skills as she progresses on her mission to find her son. After meeting the Railroad, the Tinkerer decides to work with them, and she believes that synths are too human to be controlled and taken advantage of. She can also join the Institute because of all the advanced science that fascinates her. However, we believe the Railroad is a better choice as our Tinkerer is quite morally minded, in the traditional sense, of course. After adapting into the Wasteland, the Tinker will also focus greatly on the things that she desires for herself. She will build herself a scrapyard or two and enjoy peace and quiet as she ponders her current world and discovers innovative ways of making new things. The Tinkerer is going to pull apart the Wasteland with 5 Strength, 5 Perception, 4 Endurance, 1 Charisma, 10 Intelligence, 1 Agility, and 2 Luck. She's going to be getting 12 Intelligence, however, through a sort of exploit, so if you don't want to do this, you can use the special book on something else. What we recommend doing is drinking some alcohol to reduce your intelligence, and then get the special book and use it on intelligence. This will make your intelligence 10, however, this is still lowered by the alcohol. When the alcohol wears off, you'll have 11 intelligence, and then you can get the bobblehead making it 12. This represents the super high intelligence of the Tinkerer and will help you level very fast throughout your playthrough. 5 Strength will help the Tinkerer carry lots of junk, and coupled with 4 Endurance shows her hardy nature and genetical physical prowess at certain activities. The Tinkerer is also quite perceptive, hence 5 Perception, and this has been chosen to access certain perks such as Night Person. She's never been charismatic or had to rely on luck, and since she left Vault 111, she isn't as agile as she used to be. Now let's explore exactly how to create this build as you progress through your playthrough. We'll be explaining all the perk choices up to level 50, and anything after this is up to your discretion. Unlike the majority of our builds, the perk choices we make aren't going to be mostly chosen as soon as they're available. This build is less about maximizing what perks it can get for combat as soon as possible, and more about emphasizing collecting and crafting. Remember you can of course change our perk decisions to create your Tinkerer differently, but this is what we recommend. Now it may sound a bit contradictory, but straight off the bat we're actually getting the first rank of Rifleman to cause 20% more damage with our non-automatic rifles. It's a damage perk, I know, but you can't scavenge in places that are filled with dangerous enemies. The crafting and collecting perks will come soon enough. Next we get the first rank of Night Person to boost our perception and further increase our intelligence by 2 points between the hours of 6pm and 6am. This is great for all playing a scavenger who often picks her target areas when she won't be seen by roaming wastelanders and it also helps you level faster which is useful. At level 4 we get Scrounger to collect more ammunition around the wasteland and this is helpful for a few reasons. Firstly it helps us with using multiple types of rifles and secondly we can sell any ammo we don't use to make caps to purchase resources with. Another reason it's helpful is because it will allow us to find fusion cores to sustain our power armor usage. Speaking of which, we then get the nuclear physicist perk to make fusion cores last 25% longer. This perk also affects radiation damage, but that's not relevant to this build, so we're not going to discuss it. At level 6, we get the fortune finder perk to start finding more caps around the wasteland, and this fits in perfectly with a scavenger character. Any scavenger would collect as many caps as possible to help them make a living, and to help them afford tools and materials. We're then going to get the first rank of Scrapper, and this will allow the Tinkerer to break down weapons and armor to salvage uncommon components like screws, aluminium, and copper. This will help with building the scrapyard she's going to live in, and also help her with modifying all sorts of equipment. At level 8 we get Hacker, and then at level 9 we get Locksmith, and these perks go hand in hand with many of the previous perks. Hacker and Locksmith will allow us to access advanced terminals and locks to gain access to more junk and higher value loot. Hacker also fits in with the intelligent theme of the Tinkerer. At level 10, we're getting the Gun Nut perk, and now we can start modifying a whole range of rifles with all the materials we've collected and stored up from adventuring around the wasteland. 
Next up, we get the Science Perk, followed by the Armor Perk. This allows the Tinkerer to start playing with her Power Armor, improving her Normal Armor, and modifying energy-based rifles she's decided to use. At level 13 and 14, we invest in the Strong Back Perk to help us carry more junk, and with two ranks of this, we're going to have 50 more points of carry weight. We then get the second rank of Rifleman to cause 40% more rifle damage and also ignore 15% of target armor, and then at level 16, we're getting the second rank of Nuclear Physicist. This will make fusion cores last a substantial 50% longer. This will be very helpful for getting the most out of power armor gameplay. Now even though this build doesn't use power armor all the time, we wanted to create a situation where you will never have to worry about running out of fusion cores. Next, we invest 2 perk points into Demolition Expert, and now the Tinkerer can craft explosives by using chemistry stations. These explosives will also do 50% more damage. Grenades will also gain a throwing arc, and we recommend scavenging materials to create grenades very frequently. Explosives give this build a handy edge in combat while still fitting in with the crafting playstyle of this build. Make different grenades and mines for specific situations. Cryogenic grenades are always a cool choice. At level 19, we're getting Robotics Expert, and if you've got all the updates, this can now be used mid-combat. At the first rank, you'll be able to hack a robot and gain a chance to power it on or off, or make it initiate self-destruction. When you get the later ranks of this perk, you can hack a robot to make it fight alongside you and also give it commands. Similarly to Demolition Expert, this adds another buff to the offensive side of this build that isn't as simple as just shooting targets with your guns. Finally, at level 20, we're getting the second rank of Scrounger to find even more ammo for these guns. Following Scrounger 2, we're getting the second rank of Fortune Finder, again adding to the amount of caps you'll obtain during your playthrough. Then it's the second rank of Locksmith, and then the third rank, and we're definitely not going to get the fourth. With three ranks of Locksmith, the Tinkerer will be able to lockpick her way into anything in the Commonwealth, unless it requires a key, of course. At levels 24 and 25, we're doing a similar thing and getting the second and third rank of Hacker, again avoiding the fourth, and now we can hack into master level terminals. Being able to hack and lockpick her way through anywhere, the Tinkerer will have access to a very large amount of useful junk, weapons, armor, ammunition, and other valuables. These can be sold or kept, and of course, as any scavenger would do, they can be scrapped. Scrapper 2 is the next perk this build will choose, and now we get to break down weapons and armor to get rare components. These include things like nuclear material, circuitry, and fiber optics. At this rank, you can also favorite components that you want, and items containing them will become highlighted. This is great for roleplaying a scavenger build that has a keen eye for useful scrap and a deep understanding of how various items are built. At level 27, we get the second rank of Night Person to maximize our intelligence and level even faster. Again, this perk was partly chosen for roleplaying as you will often scavenge at night to avoid the crowds, and at the second rank, this perk will give you a bonus of plus 3 to your perception and intelligence during those nighttime hours. Next, we choose to get Nuclear Physicist 3, and this final rank will make fusion cores last twice as long. Now, we can basically use power armor very often if you decide you want to, and fusion cores can also be ejected from your power armor, like devastating grenades. At level 29, we get the second rank of armor to keep making improvements to our armor, and at level 30, we get Gun Nut 2, and this will allow us to create better turrets for our scrapyard settlements, and will also allow you to take your rifles and the guns of your potential companion to the next level. At level 31, we add to this crafting perk streak by getting the second rank of science. We're going to be getting even more crafting perks soon. The second rank of science is a massive help for power armor and of course any energy weapons you're deciding to use. We then get the second rank of robotics expert to incite a robot to attack after the Tinkerer successfully hacks it. At level 33, we get another rank of science, again broadening our possibilities when working with power armor and energy weapons. Next up is Gun Nut to help us with maximizing our collected guns, and then at levels 35 and 36, we're choosing the Rifleman perk. Now as enemies get a lot stronger, this big damage boost is warranted. With four ranks of Rifleman, our non-automatic rifles will benefit from three bonuses. Firstly, they'll now do 80% more damage, secondly, they'll ignore 25% of a target's armor, and thirdly, they will have a slight chance of crippling an enemy's limb. This boost to combat effectiveness will ensure the Tinkerer can still dish out firepower when she needs to. We're then getting two ranks of strong back at levels 37 and 38, and with this perk completely maxed out, the Tinkerer will have a variety of new advantages. If the Tinkerer becomes over-encumbered from all the junk she has collected, she will be able to use her action points to run. Furthermore, the Tinkerer is now able to fast travel while over-encumbered, and together these two ranks make her carrying and selling of loot much more efficient, and the same goes for her salvaging and storing of junk, which she will scrap for parts. 
At level 39, we're getting Scrounger 3 to find more ammo in the wasteland, and at level 40, we're getting the same rank of Fortune Finder for the same effect, but with caps. At level 41 and 42, we're getting rank 3 and 4 of armor, and now we can do whatever we want with our armor. The only thing we can't access is all the power armor customization options, but that will come soon. At level 43, we get the final rank of gun nut to make our ballistic rifles as optimized as we can, and then at level 44, we get the fourth rank of science. Now we can fully optimize energy weapons, and we also gain access to all the power armor customization options. The Tinkerer can now put a jetpack on one of her suits of power armor and use this power armor to boost herself up on top of buildings to look for things to scavenge. This extra maneuverability is obviously fun as well, but it truly does help with making more loot more accessible so you can collect it much quicker. Then at levels 45 and 46, we're getting Demolition Expert 3 and 4, and with this perk maxed out, the Tinkerer's explosives will cause double damage. They'll also affect a much larger area, and now she can also shoot mines and grenades in vats to make them explode for double damage too. The Tinkerer is then maxing out the Robotics Expert perk, and now when she successfully hacks a robot, she can give it specific commands. So it's almost like having another companion. The fact that this can be done during combat makes it so much more worth it, and a fun and effective investment for this build. At level 48, we're getting the 4th rank of Scrounger, and this is actually a pretty confusing rank now. We were originally under the impression that this rank helps you find even more ammo, as the description says it does, but apparently what people are saying it actually does is offer you a 5 5% chance to find a free magazine of ammo whenever you reload an empty gun. The more you know. At level 49, we're getting the 5th rank of Rifleman to deal double damage with our rifles, ignore 30% of target armor, and have a slightly higher chance of crippling a limb. And finally, at level 50, we're getting the 4th and final rank of Fortune Finder. The Tinkerer now has truly learned to discover the wasteland's hidden wealth, and she'll find even more bottle caps in containers. There's also now a chance that enemies will explode into a shower of caps when you kill them, and this added bonus is of benefit because it allows this build to collect more caps, and therefore more resources, and on top of this it also adds to the unique and zany experience of the Tinkerer. The endgame special stats for the Tinkerer, including all the special bobbleheads but not including gear, are as follows. 6 Strength, 6 Perception, 5 Endurance, 2 Charisma, 12 Intelligence, 2 Agility, and 3 Luck. So that's how to build the Tinkerer, but what about all her scavenged gear? Well, gear is going to be outlined in three stages, early game, mid game, and end game. This refers to what level you're at and not where you are in the main storyline. I can't stress that more for this build as many people may choose to play it in a pretty explorative way, completing the main storyline at quite a relaxed pace. Remember that this build will use power armor occasionally, but we're not going to explain the modifications for it. Basically create multiple suits that specialize in different things. At the start of the game, this character is going to wear the harness underneath a full set of leather armor pieces. You want to increase the resistances of this armor to the best of your abilities, and also modify it to increase your carry weight as much as possible. The Tinkerer also loves wearing a unique piece of apparel, so you're going to want to wear any funny looking hat such as the Sea Captain hat. You can find all this gear very easily around the wasteland. Just go kill a group of raiders and you should have most of it. In regards to weaponry, the end game signature weapon of this build is the railway rifle, but the Tinkerer loves carrying a whole range of rifles. At the start of the game, you're going to want to collect all the powerful rifles you can, even shotguns if you like, and modify them as much as possible for different purposes. Treat them how you treat your power armor. You might want three different rifles, like a pipe rifle with a really big scope for sniping, a laser rifle with a splitter for close range encounters, and a high damage hunting rifle with a reflex sight for hard hitting general mid distance combat. Remember this build also crafts and uses explosives, so be sure to make bottle cap mines and whatever grenades you can early on. With your mid game gear, you're going to want to keep killing raiders to find yourself sturdy leather armor, which will replace your standard leather armor. That said, you're going to want to switch out your leather chest piece for a standard synth chest piece, which you should be able to find by now. We thought this added a lot more character to the aesthetic of this build, as alongside the harness, it makes her look more like she's taken bits and pieces of various scrap to create her outfit. This will all want to be improved to have the best resistances available and also modified for the best carry weight possible. The reason we want high carry weight on this character is so we can haul the most amount of junk possible around the commonwealth. We never want to encounter a situation where we are forced to drop an item we wanted. 
When it comes to weaponry, we're going to keep upgrading our rifles and replacing the weaker ones like the pipe rifle with stronger weapons such as the combat rifle. You should also carry a plasma rifle with a sniper barrel but a reflex sight. This allows you to dish out really high damage at a medium range. That said, you should acquire the Tinkerer's favorite weapon now by heading to Big John Salvage as fast as you can. This is where a railway rifle can be found and this amazing unique weapon can pin enemy limbs to walls with railway spikes. It has a scavenger-like appearance which fits in well with this build and the wacky train sound effect and visible steam really just puts the icing on the cake making this the weapon of choice for this build. Remember again to keep crafting and using explosives to your advantage. You can set up entire minefields around your chosen scrapyard settlement and create throwables such as cryogenic grenades and baseball grenades. In regards to end game gear, you're going to be using the same set of armor I recommended for mid game, however you will obviously increase your damage resistance to its full potential. You're also going to want to replace your sea captain hat with the airship captain hat, which can be acquired off Captain Kells after you complete the end mission for the faction we recommended. Basically this is what you'll get when you decide to finish the main storyline. Of course the sea captain hat does still look great, so don't feel pressured to rush at all. For endgame weapons, you're going to keep upgrading all your rifles, including the railway rifle, but you may want to swap out some guns for better options. Remember that none of these rifles can be automatic. So two rifles I recommend getting for the Tinkerer for endgame weapons are the Gorse Rifle and the Assault Rifle. These two weapons can be used whenever you desire to kill just about anything, and it's also a good idea to use them if you're looking to conserve railway spikes. Be sure to continually craft and employ explosives in your playstyle. When choosing companions for this build, we decided that any of the generally morally inclined, unique, quirky kind of characters were the best. You could have Dogmeat as your pal who helps you explore the wasteland with his keen smell and awareness of what items are laying around. Or perhaps you'd rather Codsworth as your entertaining robotic butler who you absolutely refuse to scrap. Nick Valentine, Curie, even Strong and perhaps Hancock could all work nicely too. The choice is ultimately yours, just make sure you pick someone who you feel goes best with your Tinkerer during your playthrough. In regards to settlement building, the Tinkerer will obviously be all over it. She will preferably pick one settlement to turn into her scrapyard which she will call home. Settlers are not necessary at all, however this build can of course bring her companion. The Tinkerer is going to create a big home area full of funny statues, paintings and collectibles. Be artistic with all the unique lightbox structures you create and don't forget to spend time engineering all kinds of fun to build traps. You can also install multiple terminals and have heaps of boxes around the place filled with stuff you've collected. You'll also of course have multiple sets of power armor at different racks. Make sure that your settlement does look like a scrapyard. Arrange junk and build scrappy infrastructure all around the place to create a big scrap heap fortress. You can create multiple scrapyards at various settlements if you feel like you must expand. And that concludes another in-depth Fallout 4 build, The Tinkerer. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. We've got plenty more builds and Fallout 4 top 10s on the way. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video or a dislike if you didn't enjoy it and if you think this video is worthy of a share, please send it to a friend or post it on your social media. Scott and I both hope you enjoyed this video and remember to check the description for all our social media links and all the guides we made to help you with the Tinkerer. My name is Michael and I look forward to nerding out with you all again very soon.